What is going on everyone? Anthony Maslone here and in today's video I'm going to help you find products that you could sell on Shopify. And now in this very video I'm going to break down a few values and pointers to always keep in mind when you're going out there to try to find the product that you want to commit your time to and try selling and start testing with your ads. So pretty much what I want to keep in mind here is you know the greater chance of you having long-term success and also scalability of these products and what's going to allow you to build out a sustainable business rather than more so a cash cow. Now don't get me wrong, people can go ahead and ride a trend and make a few hundred thousand dollars quickly but that's not going to be good for the long haul and trying to last for maybe over a year or a couple years or maybe a real business that you can end up selling off in the, uh, in the long haul. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and dive into these few pointers to follow. And first and foremost, it's pretty obvious, um, we want to find demand. But how do you exactly find or gauge demand for a specific product or niche? Uh, one thing that I really like to do is I like to reverse engineer, all right? From Facebook ads, all right? And I say this by, you know, searching specific products. So let's say, you know, finding a specific video ad that has been running for an extended period of time. Maybe you keep getting hit with it, or if you find it by searching a keyword in the actual headline or the term, and you see that it has millions of views and thousands of comments, people tagging their friends, stuff that is organic and true engagement, and also people mentioning that they actually purchased a product or went to the website, stuff along those lines, and figuring out what is getting people's attention. So maybe you can go ahead and find something like that and reverse engineer it, create your own. Maybe you could write better ad copy and outdo their advertising and do a better job than they are and make more money in the uh, in the long haul. So that's one way that I like to do it. Also, the Google Keyword Planner, you can go ahead and search what keywords are being searched the most on Google. So let's say you wanted to see exactly when a specific product is facing an upward or downward trend. You could also see past history. Maybe there's a specific time of the year that a specific product is getting more searches and more traction. So maybe it's a product that's maybe only uh, sold in the summer primarily. You could see maybe months May through August, this product is selling the most. So that's something to always keep in mind as well. And you can go ahead and figure out what is going on with the actual niche in that market during a specific time of the year. Or even if it's going on a upward trend, you see that it's starting to get a lot of traction. And then also doing basic Instagram research. So let's say if you were to go ahead and spend, you know, this might take a couple hours just searching through specific hashtags and figuring out exactly what's going on in a specific market or niche. Um, now this is something that is a little bit more tedious and hard to do if you aren't following the right pages already. So with that being said, uh, Instagram is more so a little bit more deep diving, but definitely uh, reverse engineering a successful Facebook ad and also um, Google Keyword Planner are two great ways to go ahead and start gauging demand in a specific market or niche. Now, of course, on top of uh, finding demand, before getting and committing your time and getting into a specific niche, you want to know that you know there are targetable audiences. And now this can go for Facebook ads or Instagram influencers. So you may want to do some background research, just getting um, audience insights really and getting the audience insights tool inside of your Facebook ads manager and figuring out, well, what kind of uh, interests or what kind of page could I go ahead and actually target if I'm gonna start running these Facebook ads? Why are you gonna spend hours setting up a Shopify store, finding your suppliers, finding your products, editing your store, building out you know a specific theme and exactly how you want your store to look just to find out that you have no freaking idea how you're gonna market your products. So first you wanna start with your demand and gauging exactly what's going on in the market. Then you wanna work on your angle and how you're gonna sell those products. Now whether you're trying to go ahead and find someone that's doing the same exact thing and do it better because you feel like you can write better ad copy or have a better store that can convert at a better rate or you can run better ads, then go ahead and do that. Or you can also go ahead and see what kind of audiences you can go out there and target through the Facebook uh, audience insights or looking and seeing what kind of Instagram influencers you can go ahead and leverage to start building your brand and getting good brand awareness and sales through Instagram. So typically before I even think of starting a store, I want to compile at least a list of 50 to 250 Instagram influencers that I would even think of reaching out to before even committing any sort of time to getting that store started because that's one thing that I love. I love Instagram influencers and leveraging that sort of content, whether it's YouTube uh, as well. Uh, YouTube influencers are also huge. So let's say if you were to go ahead and um, send someone a sample of your product. Um, you could go ahead and have them do like an unboxing video. Now this is huge in the makeup and accessories niche, which we're also going to get into very shortly. Um, these demos and unboxing are working into their vlogs organically. YouTube influencers are absolutely huge for that. And more often than not, you get a lot of loyal subscribers that will literally idolize and follow a YouTube influencer by every single thing that they do. And that includes utilizing the same products that they use. So YouTube influencers are also a great way to find your influencers that you would potentially use and build out your Rolodex for how you're going to go ahead and build out your brand awareness and sales campaigns. 
So other than targetable audiences and demand, we also have something that we want to keep in mind. What is this product going to do? So now you could potentially find something that you know people are passionate about. And this kind of goes into the angle that you're going to take with that exact product. Now, a lot of people in the past have talked about passion products, but you also got to focus on pain points, all right? So it's not all about passion, you know, like people love fishing, so I know I can make a killing selling fishing products. Not just that. What are you going to solve for that person looking for that specific product? Now, going at the fishing example, is your fishing rod going to catch them more fish than they've ever caught in their life before? Is the knife that they're going to have in their in their toolbox going to never break and never rust? What is that specific angle and pain point or that struggle that people deal with that you can go ahead and you know actually capitalize on? So, for example, let's say that you someone you see someone out there that is making an absolute killing selling a specific product. Um, and let's say it's for people who are struggling with sleeping at night. So it's insomniacs, for example. What are you going to do when you go out there? What kind of approach are you going to take to actually make sales for that? You're not going to say, hey, this pillow will help you sleep. Go ahead, click the link below, and you can order it now and we'll ship it over to your front door. No, you're not going to say that. You're going to take an approach like a marketer. Relate to your customer. Find what they're struggling with and provide them a solution. So that's what you want to focus on with pain points and try to capitalize on people that have a specific need. And there are literally countless hobbies out there. There are people who are into cycling, skateboarding, fishing, sports, um, you know, home decor, stuff like that. There are so many things that you could potentially capitalize on that you could start selling as soon as today. So in addition to that, um, also something that you could even potentially consider is, you know, stuff that you can't find locally. So let's say if someone is looking for a piece of plywood, for example, they're not going to go and you know look online right away. Perhaps they'll just go to Home Depot because they know it's down the block and it's super easy to get for a cheap price and they can get it today. Whereas you want to find something that is specific. So maybe you know a specific hobby or a specific need or a specific pain point that you can fill. Something that someone can't just go down the street and purchase and it's not very common is what I'm trying to say. Is another thing that you could potentially go ahead and make money with on Shopify, all right? And then lastly, one of the things that I absolutely love, well, sorry, two things I absolutely love that make the most money on Shopify and something that everyone should try to gear their business model towards is stuff that provides a long-term and recurring revenue. Now, there are a few different ways that you can go ahead and do this. Now, of course, you have accessories, which are super straightforward, but the good thing with accessories, whether it's jewelry or you know just basic stuff that people wear, is that you have the opportunity to cross-sell or upsell people on those specific products that are related to it. So not only are you in the cat niche and you know that someone bought a cat t-shirt, you can go ahead and email them two days after saying, hey, that was a great cat shirt that you just ordered. Now, how about this cat mug to go with it? So what you can do is literally find things that are all under that same umbrella, under that same niche and that same targetable market and sell them items that are just like that based off of their uh, previous actions. So simple as that, that also ties into people that are uh, you know, passionate about a specific product and accessories are super easy because you can go ahead and cross and upsell them with uh, accessories that are complementary or even supplementary that like you need one to go with the other or one just simply goes well with the other. And then lastly, what I absolutely love is consumable products, all right? Consumable products and also disposable products, so kind of under the same uh, category, I guess you can say. So with disposable and consumable products, you have the ability to, number one, get people on a recurring model. Now this could be anything such as razors or makeup or some sort of thing that someone utilizes and they're clearly they're gonna need more of. So for example, like if you buy a tube of toothpaste at Walmart today, obviously we know that at some point you're gonna need another tube of toothpaste to keep your damn breath and keep clean. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna keep marketing to them saying, hey, you know, you need more toothpaste. And with that, that goes for so many other different niches and products that people can start selling. Look at Dollar Beard Club and Dollar Shave Club, how much money they have made through those disposable and reusable products that men need for their own hygiene, all right? So stuff with like that are super, super profitable because they could be more aggressive with their advertising costs and spend more than other people in their niche and acquire that customer. And they know that, let's say they spend $10 to acquire that customer, that down the line, it could be worth 20 or $25 through automated email series, all right? So that's why email marketing also plays a huge huge, huge role in whatever you sell in Shopify. This is what you want to keep in mind for the long-term vision. If you're looking for short-term profitability, kudos to you. It's still a very plausible business model. But if you're here to make serious money for the long haul or something that you potentially sell off as a full-on asset and an actual brand, you want to have something that you know is plausible for more than three to six months, not just a quick cash cow.
And selling products just like this, such as you know, reusable products, consumable products, disposable products that you can brand and build something around, that is what is extremely valuable. And a lot of people that first get into Shopify don't really realize. So with that, selling those kind of products are going to help you tremendously. And these are just some values and tips and pointers that you really want to focus on when you get started with Shopify, e-commerce, dropshipping, whatever you decide to go ahead and do. If you're selling stuff online, this is what you want to focus on, especially with physical products. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button if you learned something new. And if you are not implementing email marketing, by the way, make sure to go ahead down below and sign up for MailFunnels 14-day free trial. We are just about to launch MailFunnels 2.0, which is going to be absolutely immaculate. And we're super excited to go ahead and launch that to the public. It's coming very soon. And every 1.0 user is grandfathered in for 100% free. Staying on the same plan, no price increase, no switching costs, and you're not losing a single piece of data that you had in your original app. So go ahead, make sure you go ahead and get rolling with email marketing so you can go ahead and sell long-term products or recurring products such as you know stuff that's consumable disposable and other accessories that you can cross-sell and upsell and without any further ado this is Anthony Maslone signing off for this video if you guys have any video suggestions feel free to go ahead and drop them down below and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video <laughs>